Hello students of science. In this video we're going to talk about how you determine pH and titrations. An acid base indicator is one of the ways that we can figure out whether or not something is going to be acidic or neutral. The indicator itself is a compound whose color changes or it's sensitive to pH. Here you can see the basic one that uses at your universal indicator. It's a bunch of them together. Acidic is going to be more red. Basic is going to be more blue. Neutral is going to be right around the green range there. But it will change color based upon what the solution is. This one is going to be approximately pH 10. We use different indicators for different pH level changes, and there's lots of different indicators out there, not just this one right here, which is actually a couple of them together. Lots of different colors, lots of different pH ranges. Another way we can do it is with the pH meter. pH meter is something that measures the acidity or alkalinity, so whether it's more of an acid or a base, of a solution by measuring the voltage between two electrodes in a solution. This is kind of a fancy one you might see in a lab. I've used a couple of those myself. Here's kind of a handheld one that you can use for like checking the pH of a pool, something like that, so you know where you're at. Here's a list of a whole bunch of different pH indicators that are out there. I've put a line down the middle to indicate the neutral zone, so this is the pH 7 right here. And we have acids on the left and bases on the right. So lots of different pH indicators we have here, and you, and you can even see the different colors that they are. Phenothaline is one that we're going to be using later on. That's going to go from a clear to a pink. I've used some of the methyl reds or methyl oranges or bromo trussell purple or any one of those different ones here. I've used some of those before in the past. All those are going to be giving you different pH ranges, different changes in color based on where it is on the scale. Here's some other ones right here. Phenothaline is, of course, the one that we're going to be seeing a lot going to be using that which goes from clear to nuclear pink. It's beautiful bright pink there. Universal indicator, that's what they use for a lot of pH paper. It goes from red to green to blue and some other ones that are out there. Titration is how we figure out the exact concentration of an unknown substance. So it's controlling how much you add and measuring of a known substance how much you need to completely neutralize or react with an unknown substance. So you have a known concentration and you know how much you're adding, and you have an unknown concentration but you know how much you're adding of that. Titration allows you to figure out what that unknown concentration actually is. So you're going to be using this burette to let in a certain amount of an unknown concentration of solution and you want to see how much it takes for that indicator to completely go away. Titration tells you the point where the hydroxide and the hydronium or the proton ions are going to be equal. We call this the equivalence point. The equivalence point is where you're going to have the same number of moles of the hydronium and the hydroxide. You might think that that's going to be at neutral, but that's not always going to be the case. Now you'll notice right here it's not a straight line. As you add in different volumes of the base, the pH is going to change a little bit by a little bit, and then huge amount, and then a little bit by a little bit. The reason for that is because we're dealing with logarithms. We're dealing with that multiple of 10 right here. So that's going to cause it to change very, very quickly. It's not going to be a straight line. But that point, right in the middle of the change, that's the equivalence point. There I know, usually it's at pH 7, the hydronium and and the hydroxide concentration is going to be even. So here I can see I'm letting that volume in here, that pH changes very quickly, and this allows me to determine that point right there where that color changed so rapidly, that is going to be my equivalence point. The point at which it actually changes is called the end point of the indicator. You're going to be putting different amounts of it in, and it's going to change from one color to a different color when you reach the end point of that indicator. So you add the indicator in there, have your burette, and you let in different volumes of the liquid, and you wait for that color to change. The point at which that changes tells you how much you added, now you can figure out that unknown concentration. The standard solution is the known solution and concentration that we're going to be comparing it against. So I have my unknown acid down here and my known base, and I'm going to measure, based on here to there, how much I've actually added in there to cause it to turn pink. That is going to be my standard solution. I want you to roughly sketch this into your notes here. This is roughly what a titration is going to look like. So across the bottom, we have my volume of sodium hydroxide, a strong base. And I'm going to go 0, 10 ml, 20 ml, 30 ml, etc. right there. And here I have the pH. And you're going to notice it goes up, up, up a little bit, a little bit, and then a very, very, very rapid change. It's almost vertical in that line right there. The slope is almost infinity, where it goes up very quickly, and then it very quickly smooths out again. You'll notice it's kind of a mirror. Right across the middle here, that's where I'm going to have a pH of 7. This right here is going to be my phenothaline pH range. Phenothaline changes color between the ranges of 8.2 and 10 on the pH scale. Anything below 8.2, phenothaline is actually going to be clear. Above 8.2, it's going to be this bright nuclear pink right there. And right smack dab in the middle of that is what we call the end point. 
the point at which the indicator changes color. This part right here in the middle of the slope, that is going to be my equivalence point. That's going to be where the concentrations of them are going to be the same. The equivalence point is always going to be at 7 when you're using a strong acid and a strong base. You'll see in a moment how that's not always going to be the case. Now really, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the point at which that is. And you might be thinking, wait, if the equivalence point is going to be at pH 7, then why am I using something which is a range of 8.2 to 10? Well, the reason is the difference between the equivalence point and the end point is going to be like a tenth of a drop. Very, very rapidly the pH changes between this section right here. So we're going to be using these because it's going to be so close between the pH change and the actual equivalence point right there. It's like half of a drop. So we're going to be using them because they kind of overlap. Here I'm going to be using a strong base, sodium hydroxide, and a weak acid, or oxalic acid. Once again, here's my phenothaline pH range of 8.2 to 10. Below that, it's clear. Above that, nuclear pink. Right here is going to be my end point where the indicator is going to change color, and right here is going to be my equivalence point where those concentrations are going to be the same. Now you may notice that they're a little bit closer here, and also the pH is not going to be at 7 when it reaches the equivalence point. That's because in this case, I'm going to be using a weak acid with a strong base. So it's almost like the strong base pushes it further up, closer toward a pH of 14, where it's more basic. But the whole idea is still the same. I'm trying to find the equivalence point by finding the end point, and they're so close, like a tenth of a drop between them, that you may as well use them together. Here's in this case, I'm titrating with an acid, so the pH is going down. Here's the range of my indicator, and the equivalence point is going to be roughly in there. This is going to be below pH 7, because in this case, I'm going to be using something that is a strong acid and a weak base. But you still get the idea. The equivalence point is going to be right here, and the end point is right above it. They are very, very close. Here's my indicator where the color changes based upon where it is. And they're very, very close, which is why the titration works. Normality is a slightly different concept. It's very similar to molarity, but it adjusts for the number of protons or hydroxide that are present in an acid or a base. So normality is just going to be the concentration, the molarity, times the number of equivalents. That'll make more sense in a moment. A monoprotic acid is what we've seen before. Hydrochloric acid dissociates to form a proton and a chlorine anion. So 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid is going to be 0.5 normal hydrochloric acid. They're going to be the same because it's a monoprotic acid. Let's look at a diprotic acid, something like sulfuric acid. That's going to dissociate to form two protons and one sulfate anion right there. So my 0 0.075 molar sulfuric acid is going to be 1.5 normal sulfuric acid because you have to factor it in. For each one mole of this, you're going to get two moles of the protons released. So you can take that and multiply it by two. A triprotic acid, like phosphoric acid, that one is going to be multiplied by three. So 2.5 molar is going to become 7.5 normal because it's going to be 2.5 times three. For bases, same idea as before. Sodium hydroxide, you're going to get one mole of hydroxide for each mole of sodium hydroxide. But if something like calcium hydroxide, that's going to dissociate to form two of them. So a 2.1 molar is going to become a 4.2 normal because you're going to be multiplying it by two. The way you actually calculate titrations, you're going to use the simple equation here, MAVA equals MBVB. MA is going to be molarity of acid, VA is going to be volume of acid. MB, molarity of base, VB, volume of base. And if you're going to be talking about normality, same idea here, just substitute out molarity for normality. So once again, this is how we're going to calculate my unknown from my known right there. So remember, there's my pH 7 right at the equivalence point, and we are going to be able to figure out where that is the volume that it takes to get there is going to give me my unknown concentration.